What he's saying is uh, persistent prayer, not vain repetition, not just a meaningless sense of words so that God will hear you. It's a confident prayer. You know that God is gonna hear you. You know that the relationship is established, but you're seeking constantly to see the will of the Lord accomplished in your life. And if you'll consistently do that, you will begin to see God move. You'll see his hand in your life. Everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. The one who knocks the door will be opened. And so that's, uh, you'll never find your life, you'll never find victory in your Christian life. Some of us here, we're, we struggle with besetting sins. Besetting, that's an old word, isn't it? Sins that you can't get over. Over and over and over again, you feel tired. Of, Why can't I overcome this addiction? Why am I always doing this? I hate that I do this about myself. If I ever got caught, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be in really bad trouble. Why do I keep doing this? Why can't I find victory over my sin? Why can't I find victory in the Christian life? And Jesus is saying, you don't have because you don't ask. And you don't ask enough. You don't ask consistently. And so he's calling us to a kind of lifestyle that says, every single day, I'm gonna pray for the nature of the kingdom to become manifest in my life. That's where the power is. So, you may say, well, that's not very profound, Wes. And you're right, it's not. But I bet, I, bet, I bet not many of us do it. When is the last time that you prayed for your spiritual growth in the same way that you prayed for a sick child? I mean, we do it when we're child sick, Right? I'm gonna be doing it this week. I'm joining a family in prayer. Their child's gonna be having a surgery. I'm gonna pray every single day without ceasing. I'm, I'm devoting myself to prayer. You do it when you're in a financial burden. Payday's coming, but the bill's coming sooner. How am I gonna get, the, how am I gonna get this paid? And so you pray every single day. You pray without seeking. It's an intense prayer. You pray when there's a relationship on the rocks. You pray when all these other things, but how many of us, of us pray with that same intensity when it comes to our spiritual growth? How many of us pray the nature of the kingdom of God into our life with that same kind of intensity? So what does it look like? Well, I went through the Sermon on the Mount and just kind of wrote down some thoughts. Look at Matthew chapter five, verse three. What does it look like to ask, seek, and knock in the in the Beatitudes. We'll be quick with this. Matthew 5, 3 says, blessed are the poor in spirit. And so you ask, you, you become aware of your spiritual lack. So you say something like, Lord, I recognize my complete need. I know that were it not for your mercy, then I would be consumed. Everything that I have is a result of your grace. Empty me of pride, break the chains of arrogance in my life, remind me of the foolishness of self-sufficiency. And so you begin to understand your need, your lack of spirituality, and you ask the Lord, Lord, break those chains of pride, become a manifest in my life, and then you seek him. And so you, you don't just leave it in the prayer closet, but you actually get out in the marketplace. Put yourself, consciously put yourself in situations which will demand a poverty of spirit. Get married. <laughs> and you're gonna fail? Maybe, probably. But keep persisting even in the face of opposition. So people begin to praise you and you drink your own Kool-Aid and all of a sudden you're proud and puffed up. Not keep, persevere. Yes, repent of that sin. Uh, start the process over again, but do not quit praying for the nature of the kingdom to become manifest in your life just because you screwed up once. You're gonna screw up, you're gonna screw up probably a lot, but continue to persevere in your spiritual growth. Mercy giving, blessed are the merciful. Here's what I wrote. Lord, I recognize my unforgiving spirit towards this person. I don't want them to receive mercy. I want them to suffer pain. Any of you ever prayed like this? I don't want, I don't want, I don't feel merciful. And so Lord, I realize that this bitterness is killing me spiritually. Give me a spirit of mercy giving. You ask and then you seek. You know how you seek in this way? You go talk to the person. Instead of avoiding them in the hallway, engage them. Write the letter. Leave the voicemail. You, you seek, you put yourself in a situation where you wait and wait and seek, Lord, your kingdom come in my life. I'm gonna engage this person in conversation and see what happens. Are you gonna, is it gonna go well all the time? Are you gonna, is you gonna, are you gonna always be successful? Maybe not, but you keep knocking, you keep persevering. Ask, seek, and knock. 
Jesus says, you're the salt of the earth, Matthew 5, 13. You're the light of the world. So Lord, I see my need, my relationship with you is having no impact on my world. My life does not bring conviction to those who sin. My testimony is worthless. Any of you had this before? I make no impact on my world. I have a relationship with God, but my relationship with God doesn't do anything for anyone around me. So you realize your spiritual lack and you begin to pray to the Lord. Lord, make me salt, make me light, give me influence, give me leadership. Put, and then after you ask for it, then you strategically put yourself in situations where you watch God answer that prayer. And so you go to see you at the pole. You begin to share your testimony. You stand up for what is right. And then you persevere. You keep on knocking. And so even when it costs you, you stand. Even when people bring up your past you stand for what is right. You become salt. You become light. You shine a light in the darkness. You slow the decay. Ask, seek, and knock. Go on and on. Matthew 5, 21, pray about your anger. Matthew 5, 23, the person who has a grudge against you. You, you pray about that. I remember when we preached uh, that passage there in Matthew 5, 23, and all throughout the week, people were coming and said, would you join me in prayer? I'm gonna have to go and confront this person. Would you pray with me, pray for me? Why is that? Because they knew it won't be successful. The kingdom won't come in my life unless I pray to my father for him to bring it. It's a reminder of our neediness. It's a reminder of our dependency. And your heavenly father, when he sees you aware of those things, he loves to answer your prayers. And so pray. 